Welcome to Direct Talk. Our guest today is Tetsu Ji Honna, music director and principal conductor of the Vietnam National Symphony Orchestra. He moved to Vietnam in 2001 and has guided the orchestra in Hanoi for the past 17 years. Vietnam may not be well known for their classical music performances, yet the orchestra has grown steadily under Honna. They have been playing overseas and even performed a challenging concert program consisting of the complete symphonies of Gustav Mahler. 2018 marks 45 years of diplomatic ties between Japan and Vietnam, and Honna and his orchestra recently held a concert in Japan for the first time in five years. We asked him more about the musical vision he shares with his Vietnamese musicians. Dvorak's From the New World echoes throughout Tokyo's Suntory Hall. The Vietnam National Symphony Orchestra, or VNSO for short, is made up of 70 members who are all Vietnamese. There's something special in the sound that these Vietnamese musicians produce. There's something unique about it, especially when they play stuff like Mahler's slower movements or the music of Debussy or Toru Takemitsu. They produce this beautiful sound that you don't often hear anywhere else. The deep, relaxed sound of the string section. Hona says that the sound is a product of circumstance. Musicians that grew up in Vietnam in an environment largely removed from classical music. It takes a very long time to get a grasp of the orchestra as a whole and what role each part serves within that. But when it finally clicks, that player really becomes able to reach that next level. It really becomes their music. There's no right answer when it comes to how a song should be played. You have to constantly question what you're doing and never fall into complacency. You can never rest on your laurels. Don't try to fit some mold. That's what they've taught me. Honna was born in Fukushima in 1957 as the second son of parents who ran a traditional Japanese confectionery shop. He began seriously studying conducting in university. After graduating, he won the Tokyo International Music Competition for Conducting and received awards in similar competitions in Italy and Hungary. He was invited by world-class orchestras to appear as guest conductor, and he steadily built his conducting career. The turning point came when Hona was 43. As the conductor of the Nagoya Philharmonic Orchestra, he joined a series of concerts being held throughout eight countries in Asia. Up until that point, his attention was mostly focused towards Europe, but when he first laid eyes on the Hanoi cityscape, he was captivated. From the bus, you could see street vendors, faux stands, magazine sellers, just all sorts of vendors. Each vendor was lit with naked light bulbs, just this incredibly warm, moving color. There's this Van Gogh painting called The Night Cafe. It was kind of like that. This streetscape with all those naked bulbs reminded me of that painting. And it just really left an impression on me. I wondered what I was doing with my career. I just wanted to learn about Vietnam. Honna and his orchestra performed at the Hanoi Opera House. Afterwards, VNSO principal cellist Nguyen Huang Quan came to Honna's backstage dressing room with a proposal. He came into my dressing room saying, help me, help us. I asked him what he meant. He said, teach us, conduct us. We need you to guide us but we can't afford to pay much. But there was something about it. It made me very happy. Those words gave me the resolve to come back to Vietnam and take on this task. 
Ho Nga was excited to take up his baton anew in Vietnam, which had captivated him. However, when rehearsal started, things did not go as he expected. In the beginning, one thing after another was a surprise. No one was showing up on time. It was normal to be late. Or when we are about to hit the climax of a piece, I'm cueing them. And the kettle drums are supposed to come in big, but the guy is asleep. I have so many stories like that. I've never seen anything like it. People would just get up in the middle of rehearsals to use the phone or go to the bathroom. Differences in national character and culture would also come into play when it came to technique or understanding a piece. Musicians sitting right next to each other, they'd be 10 measures, 20 measures out of sync, and neither of them would notice. They weren't playing as an ensemble. They were a long ways off from that, nowhere even close. But when you think about why that was the case, the conversation turns to war. They lived through this miserable period. They had to stop doing what they were doing. People who had shown talent or promise could no longer get an education. I think I was witnessing the lingering effects of that experience. VNSO was founded in 1959 by Ho Chi Minh, the father of modern Vietnam. The orchestra was put on hiatus after the Vietnam War devastated its financial and human resources. It was only able to start performing again in 1984 when it had rebuilt its ranks. When Hona came on board as conductor, the orchestra did not have a regular performing schedule and its members had an overwhelming lack of experience. Nonetheless, he felt strangely enticed by the sounds they produced. It's kind of a mess, but to me, each individual musician is shining. There's something about each musician's sound that says, here I am. And when they become one, and it takes a while for them to get there, when it all comes together, they make this sound that you've never heard before. This beautiful, emotionally stirring sound. To this day, our approach is to give it our all until we find that sound. By 2005, four years after Hona took up the baton as conductor of VNSO, the orchestra had established a reputation in its home country and had started performing regularly. In 2009, Hona was appointed music director of VNSO. In order to raise the orchestra's technical level, he asked world-class conductors and musicians to make guest appearances. The guest performers included German conductor Jonas Alber, leading harpist Naoko Yoshino, and violinist Ryu Goto. It's very simple. In order for an orchestra to grow and improve, you need good conductors, good soloists, good guest musicians, good projects. The musicians need to be stimulated, inspired, given food for thought. That's how you improve. It's that simple, really. And for example, you know this certain musician has a certain asking price, but you can only afford to pay one-tenth that price. But you tell them that they won't regret it. That's how we've gotten all these guests. I'd say, I'm serious, we can only pay you this much. And most times they tell me that they didn't need the money. I suppose they were all under Vietnam's spell. Okay, to Seeing the orchestra improve step by step, slowly but surely, Hona made a major decision. It was 2010. He decided they would play Mahler's Symphony No. 8 at a concert commemorating 1,000 years since the capital was moved to Hanoi. The challenging piece is also known as the Symphony of a Thousand due to the large choir it calls for up on stage with the instrumental performers. Yeah. 
Rehearsals were conducted in the Hanoi Gymnasium with a 134-member orchestra and 546-person choir. Such a scale was unheard of in Vietnam. Everybody is so spaced out. It's just this massive orchestra. The kids are all over the place, and the basses especially. The men are lagging. It was grueling, grueling down to the last second. Then time was up, and we had a show to put on. The orchestra overcame many challenges to bring to fruition a performance of the Symphony of a Thousand that was powerfully dramatic. Thinking back now, for an orchestra, there's really no teacher like Mahler. I'm very stubborn. I will not give up. And that means I ask a lot of the people I work with, but I don't give up, no matter what. I just told myself there was no giving up, and we managed to get through it to the end. The following year, VNSO was unexpectedly given the opportunity of a lifetime. As part of its ongoing relationship with the New York Philharmonic, the orchestra was invited to perform concerts in New York and Boston. It was what they had dreamed of. The war was over. And now this orchestra from Vietnam was being invited to perform in New York, in Boston, in America. That's huge. We were still processing it, but everybody could feel this was huge. I could see their resolve. They were determined to go. The orchestra performed Adagio for Strings by American composer Samuel Barber a piece used in the film Platoon, which depicts the Vietnam War. 36 years after the end of the war, of the Vietnam veterans who were invited to attend the concert, some couldn't hold back their tears, saying that they felt that with the performance, they'd been forgiven at long last. I really believe that music has immense power. Let's say you have two enemies who sat down and listened to the second movement of Beethoven's Violin Concerto together. I feel like the music has the power to clear the air and get people to look past differences, forgive each other, and work together. This is footage from a concert the orchestra held in Japan in July 2018. For their encore, Hona had the orchestra play a Vietnamese folk song passed down in the Bac Ninh province. Hona's initial encounters with Vietnamese culture and customs baffled him. But over the 17 years he has spent with VNSO, he has come to the realization that its guiding principle ought to be to value what makes them quintessentially Vietnamese. The Berlin Philharmonic, the Vienna Philharmonic, NHK Symphony Orchestra, all great, but we will never try to do what they do. Instead, I want to encourage these musicians to play the music they have inside. And when that goes well, it's no longer about who's the best or who's the second best. I want to establish a unique sound for VNSO, just like Orchestra de Paris has its own sound. We're all on the same page. I've written, follow your destiny. Just go with the flow. Even if you try to resist it, nothing will come out of it. When you meet with someone, or when someone pitches you an idea, in my mind, all of it is destiny. And I want to always follow my destiny.